as always, awkwardly looking at the call recording software. We're good. We're live. Hey, everybody. Drew here from ThatAnxietyGuide.com. With me again is Billy from Anxiety United in the UK. Good morning, Bill. Yes. We're it's good to be here. It is always good to be here. Always fun. So we are back again with the next in our little Anxiety 101 series. We're gonna we're talking about an article. I'll just go through the quick introduction. We're talking about an article I wrote years ago. It will be linked in the video description. No matter where you're watching or listening, you'll be able to find that. And we're just taking the article uh, step by step, little section by section, and, and kind of you know blogging, vlogging, whatever you call this, on each section to expound on it a bit. And uh, this is number eight, I believe. This is number eight, yes. Number eight in the series. And today we're going to talk about the idea of finding the root cause of our anxiety problems. Mm-hmm. And, and I think, how, much, how much importance you put on that. Yes. And, and it's mm. important. It's important. And I mm. think this might be the first one that we hit, the first little subject that and I'm going to start by saying this is a big one. I mean, it is a, mm. they're all mm. important, but this isn't one of those ground shaking ones, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, and other than, and I'll, I guess I'll start the discussion by saying, I think finding the root of the problem is something that is always worth doing, but it, this is a subject that could kind of, along with what we're going to do next week about therapy and professional help. These are things that aren't, aren't necessarily impediments to progress, which we talk about a lot obstacles, but they could send people down maybe a, a wrong path. Mm. Not necessarily mm. bad, you know, working on yourself is always good, but in terms of dealing with anxiety, sometimes this can send people down the wrong path, mm. um, you know, and waste a little time. So maybe we'll talk about that a bit. So in terms of finding the, I'll, I'll just start by what I wrote here. So I wrote, finding the causes of your panic attacks is a good thing, but not by itself. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Stress, negative thinking, reactions to past traumas and emotional issues issues are just some of the many possible panic and anxiety triggers. And we're all different. Our life circumstances are all different, and that means there is no one cause for panic attacks. Mm. So, I don't know. Maybe we should start with that. Have you ever gone down the road where, you know, it's, it's a, well, if we could just get to, to the bottom of this, we'll solve yeah, it. Yeah, no. I think for me, like, the, the main instigating factor was stress. Like, I had a major stressful event. Okay. I was also, I don't know whether other people know, but I was a weed smoker when this first started, or I just stopped smoking weed, so whether that was a contributing factor, I don't know. Okay. But I, th- I think for me, like, just these m- explosions of stress and these events, that's what caused my initial panic, so I think the stress led to the panic response. But then since then, it's it's just been a fear of having another panic attack, so that's what I was thinking with, with finding the root cause. I don't think the root cause is the problem of the panic anymore, because it's the panic that is the problem of the panic. It's not the fact that I had a stressful event. I don't think about that when I panic anymore. I think about the last panic or, you know what I mean? Yeah. So finding it's not it's not the cause, it's just the stressful event. But knowing that that happened has no effect on whether I freak out in the next 10 minutes or not. All right, well, I, I, let's wrap it up because I think he just summed it up for today. We're done, Ralph. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hit the <laughs> like button. Yeah, bam. That's <laughs> uh, Billy totally nailed it, I think, and that is my view on this too. Finding the root cause that led you into a state of anxiety to begin with is ne- never a bad thing to do. Mm. But when you get into a situation where you're dealing with panic disorder or an anxiety disorder, or like Billy just said, what you're actually afraid of is the next panic attack or how mm. you feel or your symptoms or those negative thoughts in your head. The root cause doesn't matter anymore. Now it's a new cause. I'm right. proud of myself. You wow. nailed. You nailed it. You summed it up. We got. We're about like four minutes in. We're done. <laughs> Why don't we just tell jokes and sing songs for the rest of the time? <laughs> you start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Hey, two guys walk into a bar. <laughs> um, so I, I think that's super important, and I, and I find recognizing that, and just like anything else, where we've talked about this so many times, you know, it's really we're afraid of how we feel or mm. how we might feel in a given situation. That's what leads us to curtail our lifestyle and the world to get smaller for us when we're, you know, afraid of panic attacks mm. and afraid of our anxiety. And I see a lot of people do go down the road of like, well, I'm going to see a therapist, which is awesome. It's uh, Everybody should do it at some point in their life, probably, because we all have mm. issues, right? Mm. Everybody comes with issues. That's that's totally fine. It's part of being human. And I, I see many people go down that road where they, they do feel like, if I could just find out why, it must have, you know, yeah. must have been something in my past. It must you have been. You think there's possibly maybe a bit of a stigma attached to seeking therapy? Because when you see it in movies and that, there's all, it's always they sit down, tell me about your relationship with your mother, stuff like that. Yes. Do you think that plays a part in people thinking that that may help then? 
I because think that's what I always see. I do think that, and I think um, this will bleed into a little bit of next week's topic too. Yeah, about, yeah. Uh, therapy, but I, I do think that because in the media we are we see therapy as one thing. We, mm. It's very rarely portrayed as anything but sitting in the therapist office, you know, mm. face to face, and talking about trauma and. Mm -hmm angst and you know distress and and the things that have led you to this horrible place and and that's a psychodynamic type of type of therapy and that's a thing and it has benefit mm -hmm. but the best portrayal and i'll throw this out there i, I should save this for next week but but i i love this so much because do you ever watch the sopranos the american series i haven't i haven't but my dad did and he told me quite a bit about it and yes. said that i should watch it the sopranos mm. is you know outstanding you know it's it's been over long ago and you know, but if you get a chance to watch The Sopranos at some point, the central character, Tony Soprano, this this mafia boss in New Jersey, mm -hmm. just so well done by James Gandolfini. It's such a good series. But he starts the series by having panic attacks. So yeah, he, yeah, I heard that, and, yeah. Yeah, and he goes, he enlists the aid of a therapist played by Lorraine Bracco, and, and they just sit and talk. And at some point, and I remember watching the series, and I loved it so much, thinking, like, this is wrong. That you get the, It's the wrong mm. therapy. I'm yelling at Tony mm. Soprano, this is the wrong <laughs> therapy. And at one point, his therapist has her own therapist, as most therapists do have their own therapist. Right. And that therapist tells her, like, why are you talking to this guy? You know that what you're doing is not effective for an anxiety disorder. And I remember standing right. up, like yes like they acknowledged it I, yeah 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 Yeah, but I, I think what you said in terms of that stigma of like well i have to dig up skeletons for my panic mm. attacks to go away yeah that's not really true mm. because like you said once you get to the point where it's the panic itself that you fear that's it yeah the skeletons fade they don't matter anymore i suppose i wonder if it has an effect if there was a traumatic event that led to the first panic attack whether that but would that sort of cross over into PTSD a bit would it or? I've heard people talk about that this is a tough topic because it's so there's so yeah, many we, facets we're all yeah, different yeah we could cross over and go down different avenues and we could and, and here's my mm. thought like what when when you start when you get to the point where it's actually the I'm just reading a little bit when you get to the point where it's the panic re that you're afraid of like you said the, mm. whatever that root cause is starts to fade into the background but once you've got to the point where you're not afraid of panic anymore like in my case for mm. instance mm -hmm. you know I live a pretty normal life at this point but every once in a while, I do experience anxiety and even panic. Yeah. Um, mm. And I, you know, is the root cause that led me to this in 1986, is that still an issue? That could, mm. it could be. Mm. And so why am I, why, even though I've gotten past being afraid of how I feel, why do I still continue to be predisposed to this? Mm. People might argue it's physical, it's genetic, it, possibly but yeah, yeah you know is there still something bothering me from my past mm. it's it's possible mm. it's possible mm. so i think you can't discount it but what i would what what did i say in the article uh learning to identify your triggers and deal with them is an important part of recovery but only if we're also doing the work that you and i have been talking about yeah yeah that's it you have to be facing the panic and learning to not be afraid of it mm. so there's no way around that um i think so you got to do both you know, you got to learn mm. to not be afraid, and then you also have to be. Once you've gotten to that point, then sure, working on. It's a tricky. It's a tricky one because I mean, some people could go back and try and go over whatever it was that started the the panic, and that could help them. But it could also be detrimental because it might actually make them feel worse going back and looking over stuff. So, I suppose each to their own. It's a decision that you have to make. It is your own choice isn't it it's not a fact of you need to go back and try and deal with it because yeah. it, it, it may well make you worse and i think the main message that we have to get out in this particular episode is that it's worth doing the work when you think it's right for you like you said it's very yeah, individual. Yeah. there's no mm. blanket answer to this but it's important to understand that digging into your past and looking for skeletons and traumatic events when you're really afraid to go to the supermarket or get in your car yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're going down the wrong road. I mean, it's prioritize. Some, yeah, yeah, prioritize. First, you got to be able to get back to the supermarket or the shopping mm -hmm. mall or the school recital or whatever. And once you've solved that problem and you're not afraid of your own body and mind anymore, then by all means, start to dig. Mm -hmm. So it's a tough one because I, I, I've known many people who have spent a lot of time sitting in a therapist's office. You know, probably making some progress. There's personal growth and mm. things of that mm. nature, but but getting so 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 frustrated because I don't, you know, I'm still panicking. I'm still, I still can't yeah, get, yeah. still can't get in the car. And mm. my my therapist told me that I'm I try to please everybody. 
okay, mm. maybe you do. <laughs> that's, certainly, yeah, yeah. that's certainly possible, but that isn't going to help you get in the car. Mm. So, mm. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, have you ever considered, should, do we want to go down this sort of little bit of a personal road here? Have we ever considered what our own, oh, you, you said it's stressful event. Uh, mine, yeah, yeah, mine was girl trouble, basically. Uh, I had a I had Women. a fallout with a with a girlfriend and she sent two chaps around to my house and they smashed my car up <laughs> with a hammer. Shit. They oh. smashed the windscreen of my car with a hammer and they were shouting up because I used to live above a shop with my right. dad. Yeah. Like in his, his masonette thing. And they were smashing the car up and they were shouting me to go downstairs because they wanted to yeah. duff me up with the hammers. And it weren't it weren't then that I had the freak out. It was a couple of days after and I was home at home on my own with my lad. Yeah. I think my dad was at work doing security or whatever, and I'd put my son to bed, and I was just sitting downstairs playing on the Xbox, and just that's when it just happened for me. I think it was like a fear of maybe if they come now, because at the time that it happened, my brother was there, I had a neighbour around, we were playing Tiger Woods golf on the Xbox. Yeah. So you know, so I had I had a few people there, so they were almost dealing with it with me. Right. But then when I was at home on my own, my like. I think my son was about five years old or something, so I was feeling a bit more vulnerable, I guess. Sure. And that, that was when it sort of... Although nothing happened. It's right. just that that's when my brain decided we're going to deal with this now. And, and that, that is a traumatic kind of thing. I mean... Yeah, you, yeah. You know, you live The Sopranos, dude. You don't have to watch it. That is, it's like a scene from that. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it was pretty scary. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. an upsetting thing for sure. I, I get mm-hmm. that. So, you know, that's good if you take that as like, well, that was sort of the triggering event. I mean, there's, there's, it'd be very hard to... to... I don't live there now, by the way. <laughs> People don't walk the streets wielding hammers around this area. Well, that's, that's good news. That's good news. Although, that, that, to be fair, there was a murder across the road like uh, a month ago. All but right. Carry on. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> yeah, I spoke about it. Um, oh dear! I welcome think, to the UK. Welcome to the UK. Hey, oh, you yes. know, well, you see what's going on here right now, so we won't go yeah, down that exactly. road. Um, right. I think we could draw if we look at that and say, okay, yeah, then I'll, I'll tell my story too. But if we look at that story as yeah, okay, that was a scary event. It was stressful, blah blah, and it triggered this. Mm-hmm. I mean, down the road, getting to the point where you have to kind of, you know, force yourself to work, walk down to the mailbox. You, you can't really draw a connection. It's just not, yeah, there's it, no, it, nothing. It, it snowballed so far beyond that to be mm. just being afraid that you will panic if you go to the mailbox. That was it. That was the the initial thing was just the, I was so focused on how I was feeling. Right. Not, the, not the thought of, oh God, more people could come. That didn't even enter my mind. It was just what's happening to me. Right. Right. You know, and that's where it escalated. And then the next time something happened to me, like physically, yeah. I just went went down that rabbit hole again. Yeah, it makes sense. For me, the very – I feel like I lost my audio. No, there we go. The very first time that I ever had a panic attack, like things could not be going any better. Can you hear mm-hmm. me? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, things could not be going any better. I was – I guess that was my sophomore year at, at, at college. It was 1986, which is a long time ago. And I remember I was in the house I grew up in. I was home for spring break, actually. So I was like laying mm-hmm. in my, my bedroom, like just the most familiar, comfortable, safe place in the world. And it hit me just like out of the blue. I, I had a perfect grade point average that semester. Everything was going great. And bam, the wheel just fell off on me. So who the hell knows what the root cause of that was? Right, right. And I, I have spent time with a couple of different therapists over the years, one of which was tried to be really helpful. But her, she kept telling me that, you know, it's like a milk bottle. The milk bottle is full. You can't put any more milk in it. It's overflowing. It's over. You have to yeah. empty it. And, and that might be true. I'm sure that there's things in my past that probably have to mm-hmm. deal with. Mm-hmm. But but it was so ineffective, and I think the message really here is when you're finding the root cause, you're going down a, ther- a road with a type of therapy that isn't shown to be terribly effective in, yeah. in solving the immediate problem. So, uh, you know, I don't know. At some point, will I go back and look at, you know, like my parents were mm-hmm. divorced, divorced when I was in elementary school, and I'm sure that mm-hmm. that has some impact on me. And did that contribute? I don't know, maybe. But mm-hmm. in the end, without ever really uncovering that root cause, here I am. So, yeah. you know, I got yeah. past all those issues. So. I think I ended this, the, the little section of the article by saying, learn not to fear panic, and in the long run, it won't matter what mm. that original root cause was. You'll never spend mm. your time worrying about having a panic attack again. And, and yeah, that's, that's it. you still may live with some fear or regret or trauma from your past or your childhood, but you'll still be able to get in your car and go to work or pick up your kids mm. from school or be alone or do all those things. 
So one one thing that was interesting that you just said about your therapist saying the milk bottle was full, you need to empty it. Yeah. My my doctor's advice was to put a lid on the bottle with medication. So it's just interesting. You go see one person, they'll tell you one thing. You yes. go see somebody else, then you'll get something completely different. Yeah, that that is That's true. The there is no there's no one size fits all, is there? No, no, there's definitely not. And we all come from different circumstances. And you're right. And even different professionals that you go to for yeah. help will approach yeah. it different ways. And we'll talk about that next week with the different types mm. of therapy. But everybody has a different way. And I have I had a doctor in my past. And, you know, maybe maybe as an adjunct to this, we will do like a meds one. Mm. If you mm. feel really like putting on our flame pr- flame proof suits. But <laughs> I, I had a doctor at one point who felt the same way. He, he basically told me you can't think your way out of this. And you have a chemical imbalance. And if you were diabetic, you would take insulin, wouldn't you? And mm-hmm. that was his solution to the problem. And that went horribly wrong for me, but we'll talk about that one other day. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. so, I, you know, we're only 16 minutes into this, which is short for us. But I, uh, do we have anything else we want to say about this particular topic? I don't think there is. I don't think there is. I think this is an individual one, isn't it? We're just perhaps offering a bit of advice I and our, so. thoughts on, our thoughts on whether it would benefit us. Like, you, you're not sure whether it would, but for me, I don't personally think there would be any value in me like I can still think of what happened and that but it doesn't make me feel right. anxious or nothing like that mine is is solely based on the the physical effects of a panic attack I think I I, I would agree with that assessment in my case too you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. when I say it might be helpful I think sure maybe I'll get something out of laying on a sofa and talking about my mom, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But Mm. I have absolutely overcome the anxiety and panic thing without ever getting to the root cause of the problem. So to me... It's all the free fine need. Yeah, my advice is... uh, The best therapist I ever had said, hey, look, if you walk into the emergency room and you're bleeding, the first thing we do is stop the bleeding. Mm -hmm. Then then we'll worry about why you're bleeding, but the first thing we have to do is stop it. And in our case, the first thing we have to do is stop that bleeding. So that's it. then worry about why you're bleeding. Mm. So I think that's it. So ne- next week we're going to talk about therapy and professional help, which I think is is a pretty good topic because of the different types of therapy and the confusion mm-hmm. surrounding which therapists I should go to, what type of therapy, and what's effective, why didn't this work for me. We'll talk about that. Perhaps look at self-help as well. And Oh, that's good. We should add some self-help mm. in there. Yeah, mm. yeah, without a doubt. So that that's where we are. All right, so I guess we'll wrap this one up. As always... Yeah. How can people find you, Bill? AnxietyUnited.com uh, Facebook.com slash AnxietyUnited Twitter, AnxietyUnited It's all Anxiety United. Just You can find me there. Yeah, That's where I'm Go anywhere. Same thing for me, ThatAnxietyGuy.com or YouTube, ThatAnxietyGuy. Just ThatAnxietyGuy, whatever platform you're That's gonna, it. You're gonna That's find. That's all you need to do. And as always, we're gonna have to. We're supposed to ask people to like the video and subscribe. Like, right? That's it. Like and subscribe, and leave your comments down below. Because as we keep saying, we're gonna look at doing Q and A's at the end of this, and yes. try and go through a few of your comments. Yeah, without a doubt, comment in the video or email, yeah. or Twitter, or whatever. We're nearing the end of this article now, so uh... we are. There's only we have one, two. We really have three. But uh, really, the last one is not even a thing. It was a little yeah, bit, yeah. Uh, so mm. we may only have two episodes of this left. Then let us know. Let us know as well because we haven't actually mentioned. But let us know what you thought of episode seven. Because me personally, I thought that was the <laughs> the best one so far because it was the most hard hitting, the most honest. And I personally, even though I'm on it, have definitely taken things away from listening to that last week. That that's so funny because it just. So everybody knows, as we record this, we have not released episode seven yet because mm-hmm. we did it last week. And when we're done, when I hit the end button on this one, I'm going to publish that one. Mm-hmm. So I haven't watched it all the way through. So Very I, good. I, I'm going to take Very your word good. for it. I was a bit of a rant. So if you haven't seen episode seven, go back and watch it on the advice of my, my friend yes. Bill here. Yes. And uh, I guess that's it. So comments, questions, send them our way. We'll see you guys next time. I guess thanks for stopping by. Later. <laughs>